had to wait until noon here, and 10 after for the construction people to leave. So it's quiet, and hopefully all you're going to hear is just cars. And I have had a lot of people um, send me messages on the audio problems here, noise. There's no uh, jack on the camera for a remote microphone, you know, a lapel or something like that. So I've done pretty much everything I could do to try to keep the audio nice, quiet, or whatever. Uh, I even boosted. I even had to pull it into a program to boost the audio before I lay it into the video track. So, a um, couple of things, three things. One, I was amazed at the last video how many people do know what I know. So, a lot of subscribers and viewers that do know quite a bit about the internet and thanks for the comments. Those were great. So, Two things I want to do in this video. One is I'm going to show a few clips of how things progressed and got closer to a working flame engine. And then the last clip will be the flame engine finally works. Yeah. But the main thing I want to talk about here first is a OB, uh, yeah, OBD2 scanner for your car. Here in California, you're required every two years to get your car smog checked. And if you buy a new car or a used car, you have to have it smog checked before you can get it registered. Well, I recently bought a used van here, which I'm going to convert into handicap for my wife's uncle. He's taking care of somebody that's wheelchair bound. And to get it smogged, it was no red lights on the dash, um, I how to explain. You can have a, a check engine light or a service engine light on your dash. And in California, if you drive to a smog check station, they have to, by law, take your car in, even if they know it's not gonna pass. If the technician gets in your car and he sees the check engine or service engine light on, he knows it's not gonna pass, he takes it in, and checks it and you pay forty dollars anyway to see that it failed so I purchased this van and to get the registration change it had to be smart so no red lights nothing on the dash figured everything's fine take it to the station and they run the check come out and say it failed evidently there are different monitors within the system and the monitor that is checking something to do with the catalytic converter was not completed. So, of course, everybody knows what to do. The technician says, I've seen this a bunch of times. Go on the freeway, set your cruise control for 57 miles an hour, and drive for 15 minutes, come on back, and it'll pass. Well, I'm not going to go back. So I bought an onboard scanner same thing that they all have and when I got back I'm glad I did because I plugged it in and the catalytic converter process had not completed yet so of course you go on YouTube and you Google Dodge Caravan you know, and they all have different things one of them says you gotta sit idle for five minutes drive between at uh, 45 miles an hour which should be between 1350 rpm and 1500 rpm for two minutes i go do that come back plug it in still not ready long story short turned out to be something wrong with the catalytic converter had it replaced drove home as soon as i plugged it in everything was green so all these advice about this and that is all bull. You just drive the car, I guess. I don't know. So it's ready to be smog now, finally. And at the same time, my BMW is up for its annual, not annual, two-year re-smog. Um, I took it into BMW because the service engine light was on and I knew it wouldn't pass. So BMW does their diagnostics, it's a bad cam position sensor, they replace it, and the light's off. So I figured, you know, I've got the scanner, now if I would have plugged it in, bought it, 
and plugged it into the van, it would have saved $40. Did I plug it into the BMW? No. I took it into the smog place. The technician comes out and says it's failed because the technicians at BMW reset my computer, so all the processes had to start from ground zero. So that's $80 I would have saved having this device, two $40 bills, um, and this cost $65. So I've now still got to do something with the BMW, and my guess is to just drive it for a little bit and then check it out. So this um, came off of Amazon and it's called a Sea Reader 6001, $65. And my point is this is well worth the money. Because like I said, I don't know if other states what their requirements are, but you can drive in and no warning lights are on and you can fail a smog and be charged for it. So I just wanted to give a heads up on that. It's a great instrument. Uh, you should probably consider getting one I'm glad I did. I should have bought it a long time ago. Uh, it would have saved me quite a bit of money. So, all right, on with the um, video on the flame engine. Let's see if I can get it to do it again. There you go. How long is it gonna go? Uh oh, give me that. Yeah, something got hot and expanded. <laughs> but at least I got a running engine. This is crazy. Okay, I think I have it now. I just tried it. And this thing started accelerating. I had to take the heat away. It's going to go nuts. All I did was rather than having the full surface area, I milled off piece of the back like 20 thousandths so only the size of the, a little bit over the size of the hole is uh, touching and then I put graphite this I had this left over why does the phone always ring when I tape I need to take the phone off the hook or get rid of it <laughs> telemarket are gonna tell me how to invest in the stock market uh, this was some kind of graphite lubricant that I had it came with an oven to um, Lubricate the rack, I guess. Lubricate only with, yeah, okay. But I heated it up, put that on there, and it dried as a film. But this thing went out of control, let me tell you. Oh. <laughs> I think I have it. <laughs> I don't know. How, okay, I guess I'll probably now, next step is try to get the, a wick to go. So that's it, folks. I got an engine here. And it's not quitting. It's been going for five minutes. I had to tone the heat way down. Keep it from going out of control. Pretty awesome. 